changing minds, changing attitudes, bring ourselves to live a peace and one, show some love, hold each other's hands, in confidence we'll make the world a better place. Okay, let me put it, it's the church doctrine. That's right. When it comes to marriage dressing mm -hmm. how the wife should dress mm -hmm. how the wife the, the wedding gown should uh, look like should look like no tube no no tube no mono no no, no, no. we are changing minds and changing attitudes you are watching the princess butter Mario show <laughs> my wedding gown was a tube mine was a Mine, mine too was a tube as well. Yes. Mine was was. I went to the registry. <laughs> mine that's was. What I wore. Mine and too. he likes it that way. Mine was too. Yes. Your husband and my husband probably have do have similarities in terms of fashion <laughs> because actually mine was actually the same thing. Mm -hmm. But do you think that when it has to do with weddings, since it's just a one day thing, maybe this, the, the church should make concession to allow the bride to wear her own wedding dress, so long as you know all the vital parts are covered. Yes, just like you said. If all the vital parts are covered, are covered mm -hmm. decently, mm -hmm. no indecent exposure, mm -hmm. or trying to bring out and the cleavage, say, yes, it's okay. It's okay for me. Okay, including yeah. all right. What about the guests, the wedding guests, and all that stuff? Should the church even bother about that? No, because I mean, you don't. For me, I, I the guests, you don't have any control over the guests and what the guests choose to wear and all that. Some people like to be sexy and come to the, to the wedding because it's a wedding anyway. What What's your take? You think the church should worry about that? I don't have to say no. Okay, they are guests mm -hmm. coming in. They are not the member of the, the church. church. Okay, so you don't have to tell them. Oh, yeah, stand outside. Because you're not covering your hair, uh -huh. or because you're the way you're being dressed, mm -hmm. um, you're wearing a trouser, you're mm -hmm. not supposed to come into the, the church wedding, for the, the wedding. Church. No, you don't have to. Okay, I kind of, I, and I hope a lot of people that are um, in clergies in church are actually hearing that there are just some certain things that we make concession for. And again, you never know if the person that is coming to church might just be looking for a church to be affiliated to, yeah. and you never know if it's a lost soul that just came to church. And so your attitude and the way you approach them mm -hmm. could also make them come back. To church, especially if it's people that have not been in church yeah, for a while. Exactly. Concerning head ties. Concerning Let me ask ties. you this question concerning head ties. In some ministries and some churches, okay, I'm not going to pick on anybody specifically because even in Pentecostal churches, they have the, 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 the thing. You must tie your head to come to church. And some people feel that if you don't tie your head, the Holy Spirit is not working mm -hmm. on you, okay? All right. So now you would tie your hair for a church gathering, a church service, but you will not tie your hair for a choir rehearsal. Wouldn't you consider that hypocritical? What is your take generally on that? Uh, to me, mm -hmm. that's hypocritical. Okay. The covering of hair, mm -hmm. I'm not covering of hair. Mm -hmm. That's my coverage. Mm -hmm. The covering of hair, people are doing in church. That's mm -hmm. a church doctrine. That's a church doctrine. Yes, to me. It's not scriptural. It's not, it's not... no. It's biblical, but it's not scriptural. Uh, yes. <laughs> you must say it. But um, it's not, um, it's church doctrine. Okay. Well, some church want their members or will want some certain things. Uh -huh. You know, in some organizations, they have rules and regulations that okay. govern them. Mm -hmm. Maybe that's what they want. So do. But to me, I don't see nothing wrong with co not covering, covering your hair. hair or covering your hair. You're in the choir raiser, you're covering your hair. Then in church, you're not covering your hair. Mm -hmm. So what's the difference? There's no difference. Why, why would you not cover in the choir raiser? Then you're in the church, you don't cover your mm -hmm. hair. Or the other way or, around. Or the other way around. What What does it mean? Mm -hmm. So we, the Holy Spirit is present when you're doing the choir raiser. Uh -huh. And the Holy Spirit is not present right in the church when you're doing the worship. <laughs> No, 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 no. So there should be some form of consistency. Yes. There should be consistency. If you are tying her tie to church, let's tie it to the choir rehearsal. Mm -hmm. Because the Holy Spirit is also there. And you know some things that I also say, actually, sweetie, is that some people would be in their bathroom, taking a shower, naked. No head tie, nothing. But there, the Holy Spirit comes on them, and God says a word, give them a word of wisdom, a word of knowledge. Mm -hmm. And there's a prophecy for somebody in the church. And I keep... I keep wondering, why are we so into, uh, you must tie your hair, 
you didn't tie your hair. So because you didn't tie your hair, you're not a Christian woman. Like you said before, everything boils down to purity of heart and of mind. Now, when it has to do with how a pastor's wife should dress to bed, wearing a sexy lingerie to go to bed and all of that stuff. Some people frown at it. Now, when you're going to bed, you don't know, maybe your husband is going to wake up and do midnight prayers. Mm. And so you shouldn't um, uh, wear sexy lingerie to go to bed because it's going to affect the pastor. Do you think that wearing a sexy lingerie to bed to sleep with your husband is going to make the, it's going to blur the bishop's uh, vision. It's going to make the man of God not to see clearly his visions at night because you are being seductive. I'm not being seductive. <laughs> That's to me, it's individual. Okay. That's what you choose to. Mm -hmm. Or what you know, that's what your husband like. Mm -hmm. But I don't see anything wrong with that. Mm -hmm. As you look at me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> 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 I like that laugh. I like that laugh. That laugh says a whole lot. That laugh is pregnant, all right? <laughs> I wear one and want to wear. To bed. Yes. <laughs> and yes. you look sexy. And I look sexy. And you know, you don't, he doesn't yes. bother the bishop. No, he doesn't bother you. And make the bishop. That's what he likes. That's, I, that's what he likes. That's what he likes. Ladies and gentlemen, I hope you're listening to Evangelist Helen Wright misses that's what he likes and everything she has said here is that's what my husband likes. you don't have to wear um your night mm -hmm. wear it doesn't have to be kind of you must cover your whole part on all of that okay be free be free yes be free about it be free about it yeah with your husband anyway ah, zero what's the essence of what <laughs> and covering it will make him fall it will rather make him even more spiritual mm. sometime i had a man of god and said it out name it, i wouldn't mention it mm -hmm. he said he went for a program mm. and somehow um the wife went for a program mm -hmm. and um he the one they know he was also attend a, a program mm -hmm. in that city so when he got there mm -hmm. um, he called the wife and he was in a hotel I want to see you. And mm. well, it was about um, preparing. She was already prepared anyway to, go. to leave for the for ministration. The ministration. Mm -hmm. And um, he said, I want to see you now. So where are you? He told the wife where he was. Mm -hmm. ah, okay. He said, now, can you come now? Uh -huh. And the wife went to see him. He didn't stop the Holy Spirit from manifesting. And oh. the man of God said, that day, he manifested. He manifested so much. And the power of God was strong. Hallelujah. <laughs> oh, I like that. I like that. Yeah. And you know, that has actually happened to me as well. I, I like sharing my experiences with people like Ken. Now, that has happened to me. I'd finished preparing going for ministration here in the city of Rio, and I'm dressed up and everything. My band is playing already in the church. And my husband said, baby, you are too sexy. I can't, I can't let you go just like that. I, I got to get some, man. I need some <laughs> loving. And I just took off my clothes quietly without arguing with a man. And that was the beginning of my prophetic ministry till today. So there is absolutely nothing wrong with doing that. Now, coming to the issue of ornaments, adornment, bracelet, anklet, rings, nose ring, and all of that stuff, what's your take on those things? What's your take on anklets? What's your take on jewelries? Adorning yourself as a pastor's wife. Okay. I wear this, I wear this. <laughs> Okay. Okay. I, it doesn't stop me from okay. being the spiritual woman that I am. That's so right. I like that. I get there to that rim. Mm. It doesn't stop anything from me. Mm. I love all of this. You love them all. I don't have all. any take about somebody wearing an anklet. Like I said mm -hmm. earlier, I said fashion it is just the way you it look expressed. at it to be. Mm -hmm. Your motive of wearing that thing, mm -hmm. that dress, mm -hmm. and what you're wearing mm -hmm. at that particular time. Mm -hmm. You might decide to wear an anklet, mm -hmm. but what is the motive behind the anklet? Anklets that you're wearing. That you're wearing. That's right. That's so right. I want to say that some people said, you're enslaving yourself by wearing an anklet. When you're doing this, you're doing that. Maybe you're into one thing or another. Mm -hmm. There's a motive behind every fashion and whatever you're doing. That's right. I love jewelry. Yes, I mm -hmm. love jewelries. I and I can that. see that. Uh, yeah. And so I'm not against it. It doesn't make me less spiritual. That's right. That's, I all. like that. Yeah. I love that. 
your ornaments doesn't make you less spiritual than what you should be. Yeah. Matter of fact, I strongly believe that uh, those who are in the clergy class should study the scriptures to show themselves approved. Because again, when God married Israelite, he adorned them with all manner of adornment. And there's one thing I keep saying, if I could pierce my nose to wear a nose ring, I would, but just the fear, I can't stand a lot of pain. So that's why I haven't done it. But I strongly believe that we are all from different tribes. And in our tribes, especially like my sister, she's saying she loves the same thing in terms of ornament like I do. When it has to do with that, we are from different tribes. In my tribe and in her tribe, we like to wear body jewelries. We wear them everywhere, as you can see here. It doesn't stop your spirituality with Christ Jesus. Now, my other question before I ask for your closing remark. As a believer, do you think that how you dress should be attractive? Dress should be attractive. <laughs> <laughs> to me, <laughs> even what I'm wearing is still it? look attractive. Yes, it is. So somebody can see me and say, you look beautiful, you look That's gorgeous. right, that's right. It depends on how the person is looking at you. Mm -hmm. The eye and the context that, that person at you. is looking at you. It might look at you what you're dressing, you're dressing this to attract this person, mm. or you're dressing for attraction, but that is not your motive mm. about that. Mm. So I'm not, I dress in a certain way that I want to, the way I feel like doing it. You're happy about it. But in a very modest way. way. Okay. That's for me. That's for so, you. For the dressing that yeah, you're dressing to attract somebody, mm -hmm. or somebody is looking at you and trying to interpret what you're wearing, for me, it's no, no, no. Okay. It's a no for me. Okay. What about those choir girls who come to church and they are spiritual, very spiritual, born again children of God, daughters of God, that what they have to wear might not be the ideal in quote, if there's any word I want to use in terms of choir clothes to church. And then the choir, the, the pastor's wife would see her and say, oh, this is too sexy. This is too seductive. You're trying to come to church to seduce my husband and make them uh, fall for you. But in actuality, that's genuinely what they have to wear. That's their best, in quote, what they have to wear. They can't afford anything new. And then the pastor's wife will suspend them out of the choir. What is your take on that? And how can we not send people away from the church, but rather keep them in church until we can help them afford what they can't? Okay. Um, my take on that is... Um Sometimes it's just some women who does that. Mm -hmm. I want to believe it's complex. Okay. That one. I want to believe it's um, also in, in insecurity. Insecurity. Okay. And when you have that complex, you have insecurity. Security. Okay. That's definitely. Mm -hmm. Because you've seen this girl in church as a pastor's wife. Mm -hmm. I think your place is for you to find out from her mm -hmm. or, or call her privately and tell her, why did you wear this? Mm -hmm. Maybe what you're wearing it's not good enough. Mm -hmm. You're not supposed to disgrace her or say publicly to mm -hmm. her. Then if she tells you, oh, ma, please, I don't have any other one. This is all I, I have. have. Is now your place. Either you advise accordingly mm -hmm. or give her money. To buy. Of course. Thank to you. buy. Thank you. You don't tell her. She says she doesn't have. Mm -hmm. This is all I have. Most of those choir girls probably have students. That's youth. right. Mm. Some have might be doing manual jobs yes. of how much ten thousand or eight thousand, five thousand a, 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 a month. month. Some have students mm -hmm. who maybe they're in the university. Yes. And because we have a lot of youth who come to church, like yes. they're in the university. Yes. Sometimes we have to give bus to go to the pick them up. To pick them up. They will tell you they don't they don't even have transport. Money to come. And they wear what they have. It don't have to drive them. Mm. Mm, I hear you. Where's the church? I hear you. Where's the love of Christianity? I hear you. I hear you. Yesterday, I, I, I posted something on my WhatsApp update. Mm -hmm. A woman who saw a child who was a, a white lady, she had um, a tattoo all over her, her body. Her body and her uh, blonde hair, mm -hmm. kind of. And somebody who will see that woman who said, This one will go to hellfire. Yes. Yes. The, the choir girl you're seeing. With all sincerity of heart, mm. she's telling you, mm -hmm. this is all I have. Mm -hmm. She's not doing it to seduce or for seduction or anything. Mm -hmm. Like I said, the lady I saw, she probably said, oh, 
this choir girl, because you're wearing this short skirt, you're not or going to you're wearing this kind of thing, you don't know if somebody even dashed down that skirt and she's trying to not manage what she has That's right. to wear to church. Mm -hmm. It's your place to provide for her. Yes. And see that if you give to her, if she'll not wear what you're giving to her. Thank you. Not to just send her away. That's you know, you don't send her. I like because that. Christ himself did not come for the perfection. That's right. For those who are perfect. That's right. And a sick church, mm -hmm. as, as a family, as a community, yes, when they don't have, you should provide, yes, you should give to them yes, and support those young ladies. Yes, not to look at them in some kind of way. Mm. This one, what is she wearing today? Mm. Um, she's going to say, this is my husband. Mm. Oh, that is complex. That's, That's complex. That's the problem I like that. people have. I like that. I yes. like that. Thank so, you. And uh, like I, I said something about the lady. Mm -hmm. She carried this young girl. Child. Child. Went and nurtured this child. Mm -hmm. Showed her love, care. Mm -hmm. And four years later, with all the look tattoos, at the, look at the lady, the small girl. Mm -hmm. The child is looking like an, a black American. You see her beautiful. Sitting with her um, laptop oh. and with her earphone and all of that. And after that, I wrote in my comment. Mm -hmm. I said. The Christian who bears the name Christian, mm -hmm. they bears the name of the Lord mm -hmm. and does not do the commandment of the Lord. Mm. What is Christianity? Mm. It's about love. Love. And when okay. you don't show love to the people you're supposed to show love to, then what's the Christianity you're practicing? What are you preaching? Mm. You better about watch what you preach. I like that. I like that. Christianity is about love. It's about care. It's about saying that somebody else who doesn't have that you have, yeah. you could always share. You know what I always say? Share. Say, give what you have and don't say, I don't have enough. Pastor's wife, I'm sure you've heard from another pastor's wife and evangelist herself and what she has to say about sharing and that church is a family, as a community. So let us show love and let us represent Christ. Christ didn't come for the perfect. He came for the imperfect. And again, we are imperfect. Don't be God over somebody else's life. Evangelist, your closing thoughts on this particular topic today. Fashion as a pastor's wife. What would you say to encourage people to show love, to show care? When you dress, dress modestly. What is your closing thoughts? My closing thoughts um, for this... Um I would say, as a pastor's wife, you lead by example. Mm -hmm. Your fashion, whatever you're doing, has to be modest. Show modesty in everything you're doing. Dressed the way you want to dress, mm -hmm. with all modesty. Do whatever you want to do. Mm -hmm. Your dressing should not B, oh, somebody's looking at me, mm -hmm. so I'm not going to dress the way. <laughs> oh, what will the congregation say? say. What has my husband said to about it? Mm -hmm. Because if you, have the, if you have the right purity of heart, and what is in your heart is not the thought of the people, mm -hmm. then you forget about the people because mm -hmm. you're doing the will of God, God. And you're doing it with all mind of sincerity. Mm. That this is the way you should dress, and you're not doing it to complicate issues or trying to make somebody feel kind of way. No. Mm. So I want people to look at pastors who are even, not them to dress the way they want them to be, mm -hmm. tie wrapper, mm -hmm. that it has to be like that. <laughs> I don't even know how to tie, tie wrapper. I won't lie to you. Mm -hmm. I came to learn how to tie wrapper not too long ago. Okay. Yes, okay. I don't know how to tie. Okay. But I don't still don't even tie. Mm -hmm. Mm. Yes, because it's not my own fashion. So you don't expect, oh, she has to tie wrap her, she has to dress one kind of way. Mm -hmm. No. Mm -hmm. So people should learn with that. They don't have a particular way of dressing okay. as a pastor's wife. But just modesty mm -hmm. is what you represents should. and purity of heart with love. And that's it. Thank you. Thank you so much, Evangelist Helen Wright, for coming on the show. We really do appreciate you. Now, after all is said and done, fashion is a way that you express yourself at any given time. Whatever you do in this life in terms of dressing as a pastor's wife, even as a Christian, remember that all of us have our own preference and it is about individual differences. We don't have to dress like one another, but we can learn to appreciate how the other one expresses themselves with their fashion. 
How you choose to adorn yourself is subject to you and the Holy Spirit. Whatever you do in this life, remember, you will be accountable to God when the time comes. Let us drop this judgmental attitude about other people in the body of Christ. Instead of being a judge, let us be that voice of hope. Let us be that voice of encouragement. Let's learn to encourage people. Even your pastor's wife, I'm sure if you're wealthy enough, you could buy her things to help adorn herself if she doesn't have the money to wear the kind of outfit that you want her to wear. Yeah. Pastor's wife, even as a pastor's wife, and you see that quiet girl who doesn't have enough or good enough by your standard to wear, you could also help her out instead of picking on her and making her feel bad and make her want to run away from church. What shall be our prophet if we gain of this world and we lose our soul in the last day. And that is changing minds, changing attitude. Until I come again your way on another episode, I am Princess Pat Akpabio, and as always, do take care of yourself. Bye for now. Things are never what they seem to be Changing minds Changing attitudes Ourselves to live a peace and one Changing minds, changing attitudes Bring ourselves to live a peace and one Show some love, hold each other's hands In confidence we'll make the world a better place Just part of my new show.